Welcome back to episode 16 of the Double Down podcast presented by Waterway. Today is Friday, February 3rd, and I'm excited to be back bringing you guys another episode. I was super encouraged uh, to see that you guys love the most recent episode. Episode 15 actually got the most listens and the most views. So I appreciate you guys staying with us and, uh, you know, enjoying more episodes. I'm really, really excited about season two. It's off to a great start. Uh, and I'm just, you know, excited to follow up with more and more great episodes. Uh, before we jump into our episode today, I just want to take a second to uh, look into the Double Down Weekly Wrap Up, um, talking about, you know, kind of my updates. Um, so in terms of my knee, uh, right now where I'm at, I'm kind of at the sprinting phase. So uh, just kind of sp started sprinting last week, uh, opening up to like 75, 80%, you know, just uh, just sprinting and it's a straight line, nothing too complicated, but, uh, it feels good to kind of allow yourself to get back into those, you know, athletic body movements and, uh, feel like you're, you're an athlete again. So that's kind of been, uh, the most exciting and most encouraging part, uh, you know, of my days and of my week. So, uh, and then in terms of sports, uh, Super Bowl's around the corner, but right now we're all in on the Timberwolves. Um, I actually had the opportunity to sit courtside earlier this week, and it was one of the coolest experiences uh, I've really ever had. I've, I've never sat courtside before, so uh, it was it was an awesome time just interacting with, uh, uh, you know, the guys and the refs and just, like, the little nuances of the game. Me and, uh, me and Malik Monk were actually talking, like, the whole game, so that was, that was pretty fun. Um, and, yeah, it was just a cool opportunity. Um, so let's head into our featured interview today, sponsored by RoyaltyFam.com. Make sure you go check out RoyaltyFam.com for all your sports and loungewear needs. Uh, you know, find great prices on the hottest uh, sportswear of 2023. Make sure you DM us at double underscore down underscore podcast for a discount code to RoyaltyFam.com. Today's featured guest a former Wisconsin Badger, the 2013 consensus second team all Big Ten honoree appeared in 119 career games with 72 starts for the Badgers. He's actually the all-time career block leader in Badger basketball history and went on to an illustrious pro career overseas from 2013 to 2019. I'm super excited to welcome in my trainer, a friend of mine, and the podcast, Jared Bergen. Thanks for having me, Pete. Happy to be yeah. here. Yeah, Jared, happy to see you, man. Uh, you know, we go we go way back, and uh, I'm excited to get you on the pod and, and you know, talk about talk about uh, little college hoops, bring it back a little bit. So uh, let's get it started. Growing up uh, in Princeton, Minnesota, uh, when did you kind of know, you know, basketball was, was going to be a part of your future? I know I'm sure you played all the sports growing up and, uh, you know, doing all the little things, but when did you know that you had that passion for, for basketball? Yeah, my story is is honestly uh, different than a lot. I think where I mean, growing up, I mean, I'm, I'm you know I'm six ten. I was always tall, you know, so I was always you know naturally good at basketball from that standpoint at least. Um, but I was in Princeton. I wasn't really doing much. I was just kind of doing doing my thing in, in small town Minnesota. And mm -hmm. uh, and then once I got into high school, you know, started getting a little bit more serious, but still, you know, nothing nothing really. And then um, my my sophomore year. Um, we had a senior on the team. I was, I was starting varsity at this point. Um, we had a senior who ended up going to Southwest state. So he had, uh, like all the NSIC schools kind of recruiting him. Yeah. Um, and these, these D2, uh, coaches were coming in, you know, they're seeing me. I was probably six, eight at the time as a sophomore, so, you know, this, this big kid, like he could be all right. And they're, they're asking like, you know, who's he playing AU with? And I was like, I don't know. I would, I didn't know what AU was. I wasn't doing anything. I was just sitting in Princeton doing my thing, you know? <laughs> And then they're like, oh, you should get connected with, uh, with Howard Pulley. So I, after the season gets done, uh, I go down, I find out, you know, information for like tryouts, whatever. And <clears throat> at this tryout, I end up going head to head with, with Trevor Mabakwe, right. Future, future gopher at that point. Yep, yep. <laughs> and, uh, and I remember Trevor, Trevor like posts me up and he like hits me with the shoulder, spins off me and dunks on me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I've never seen anything like that in my life. You know, this is like, it was a rude awakening there, but uh, apparently I must have, you know, fought back and done my thing a little bit because I actually, uh, so I was 16 at the time, ended up playing mostly on the on the top 17 team, sometimes on the second 17 team as well, uh, you know, through that spring and summer. So I went from being completely unknown and then, and, you know, making the top team with Pulley. Uh, a couple months later, we're playing in tournaments against, you know, I think my very first tournament actually that we we went out of state, we were playing against Blake Griffin. 
and oh, he's wow. he's dunking everything and just just crazy. You know, where it's, so he's like, we got Blake Griffin, Kemba Walker, you know, some of these future all stars. That's like it was just a whole you know different level for me. And I came out of complete nowhere. You know, like I said, no one knew who I was. And then mm-hmm. uh, a couple months later, I was you know top hundred rankings or whatever it was. And I had a bunch of, you know, a bunch of big 10 schools and schools around the country, uh, you know, recruiting me. And by, by about uh, December, January of that year, I'd already committed to Wisconsin. So it was like a crazy whirlwind process for me where I went from, wow. complete, you know, uh, you know, nobody to within, you know, maybe eight months, you know, already, you know, climbing the rankings and committing and all that. So it was a, it was a unique process for me. Yeah, that's got to be that's got to be a crazy process because, you know, Princeton's small town, but it's not, you know, you're still close enough to the cities where it's like, you know, kind of the basketball culture and you know what's going on. But, you know, you don't kind of know that how serious AAU is. And especially I especially think especially at that time, you know, AAU was, you know, still in its you know growing phases and it's not quite sure. what it is today. So, um, yeah, definitely interesting process. Uh, kind of take us through that that um Wisconsin recruiting process was it an easy decision for you did it did going to Wisconsin kind of something that you wanted to do early or how did that process kind of you know take about for you yeah so it was uh I think early on um they were definitely a front runner from the beginning um Mm -hmm. and then uh really what it came down to there was a couple other schools I liked I really liked Purdue I liked coach Painter he was there already uh I liked him. I liked, uh, you know, Iowa State. I took a visit there when uh, it was uh, McDermott was the coach mm-hmm. there. Yep. Um, I liked him. Uh, it really came down in the end. I knew I wanted to stay close to home. Uh, it was basically Minnesota, Wisconsin. You know, yeah. all my all my friends were kind of pushing pushing the Gophers, and um, but to be honest, growing up, I didn't have like, like I was like kind of a gopher fan i guess but i just yeah. I didn't really i didn't really care that much like i didn't really like watch games all the time i never i don't think i ever went to a game like as a kid yeah um, so i didn't have like a strong connection even though like you know the home school and that was just you know i think just kind of my my family situation like my my dad is not a sports fan whatsoever like really? to this day, like he'll want like he's enough you know where he like came to my games all the time stuff it's like mm-hmm. his his interest is like outdoor stuff like hunting fishing you know yeah. shooting guns working on cars yeah. like that kind of stuff you know so it's like Love sports it. are just not his thing my mom she grew up with she had a bunch of brothers where they all played mm-hmm. sports everything so she was more around it so like you know sunday afternoons like i'm watching the vikings game with my mom and my dad's sure. like asking sure. questions you know what i mean so it's like we have a, a different situation there but um so yeah like i said it really came down to you know minnesota wisconsin uh i took a visit uh you know not to not to uh trash your boys here but um you know i took a visit to to uh, minnesota um that year and they the program was kind of in a at a rough point at, in time there where it was it was dan munson was the coach um they lost and it was just you know it was a uh, wasn't a good environment there um you know munson actually ended up getting fired like shortly after that and then, mm-hmm. you know things were kind of kind of up in the air and then uh, you know, I took a visit out to Wisconsin and it was at the time they were, they were really rolling. Um, and they had, uh, the game I went out there for, they were playing against Pitt who was ranked number two in the country at the time. Oh, wow. Um, and it was like Dick Vitale on the call, like ESPN game, all cool. that. And they ended up winning and they had, uh, Brian Butch who, uh, he does some stuff with big 10 network now. Mm-hmm. Um, when I showed up, they all the guys were joking. They said I looked like Butch's little brother. So they were calling me like baby Butch, right? Because we, you know, we're like same body type. We yeah. even like facially look similar. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I said Butch had like a great game. He had like 30 points and all this. Like, so I see like literally myself out there, like thriving in their system, like big time win. You know, I'm in the locker room after the game, like hanging out with a you know, a bunch of the guys that were, you know, guys like me that I could see myself getting along with. And to this day, mm-hmm. I'm you know, great friends with a lot of those guys. And, and then um, the other part of it was uh, Jordan Taylor yeah. um, mm-hmm. was my, was my teammate. So we, we were playing together with pulley and Jordan committed, he committed really early. So he committed like earlier in the fall of, of his junior year. So he had already committed and he was kind of in my ear, like, what are you waiting for? Yeah. Come on, let's do this. Let's team up. Let's go there. And, you know, so then eventually uh, after a couple months, I, I pulled the trigger and it, you know, it felt right. Like I said, it was uh, it just, you know, the style of play, the the culture, the the coaches, the all that stuff was it just it just felt like home. So it was uh, at the end of the day, it became a, a fairly easy decision. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And you talk about I was going to mention that as well. Jordan Taylor, you know, Mr. Basketball, he, he's committed early. He's, I bet he was in your ear all the time about and uh, 
and John Moore was already already there, or an O guy, yep. another Minnesota guy. So you kind of have that, you know, Minnesota connection, which is huge. Um, yeah, talk exactly. about talk about those kind of expectations coming in. You know, I think uh, oftentimes, you know, obviously freshmen, uh, you know, want to come in and make a you know immediate impact and, and help the program, help the team. Uh, what kind of you know expectations did you have coming in? You probably came in summer, or, you know, early fall. Uh, how did you feel coming in, and then what were your expectations for the upcoming season? Yeah, so I mean, uh, like I said, as a as a recruit, I was you know fairly highly rated. Not that that necessarily means anything at all, but yeah. you know, you you get these expectations on you. You know, you're a top hundred kid or what whatever. I ended up being, um, uh, you know, and then the, we had Brian Butch, like I just mentioned, right? Butch uh, was graduating, and Greg Steamsma, um, who played in the NBA for I don't know six six seven years, I bet he played for the Wolves for a while. Yep, yep. Both of them, both of them were graduating, so I'm like, all right, they got two big guys, you know, leaving, lots of minutes to fill. So I'm, I'm looking at my, you know, at the situation. I'm like, all right, this is perfect for me to step into and and maybe get minutes from from day one. So that was my mindset. Then when I got out there, you know, it was a, it was a little different story, and it was, you know, you you learn it's a it's a big jump going from Princeton, Minnesota, to uh, playing in the Big Ten. So it was there was a lot I had to learn. Um, you know, physically I had to get stronger, you know, I had to learn the system, get experience, all that kind of stuff. So I ended up, um, you know, taking a red shirt year that, that first year. Um, and even then <clears throat> I wasn't like the, the way it went down really was the, the decision to red shirt or not was, was totally on me. Right. So mm -hmm. it was, they weren't telling me like, Oh, you know, you're not going to play. We want you to red shirt. They were like, yeah, you can, you can do whatever you want here. Right. And they were just, we we're just kind of, you know, open up front about it and, talk you know and I basically told them if I you know earn uh my way into the rotation where I'm going to get like meaningful minutes I want to play if I'm if you're just going to throw me in at the end of the game for you know for garbage minutes like I'd rather I'd rather save my year so we mm -hmm. kind of played it out through the first part of the season it was like I was going through warm you know red shirts normally are sitting in, in sweats on the bench right yeah so I was going through <clears throat> I had a jersey on everything and I was going through warmups and I was, I was ready. And they're like, let's just, let's just play it out like this. We'll kind of see what happens. And then as we got through a little bit, it was like, all right. Uh, you know, once we got to, especially through like the non-conference play, you know, yeah. I, I wasn't really finding my, my niche in practice yet. So it was like, all right, I'm going to take this red shirt. But at that point we'd already kind of been doing it. And we just, it was, it was kind of different. I actually just kept warming up the whole year. So I never, <laughs> I never actually had, and it was, there was really like no reason for it. But I remember coach guard, like one of the things he said was just like, if you're doing this and you can at least get kind of a feel, like you feel mm -hmm. more like you're in that environment when you're actually going through the, the, the warm ups and all that, it's like, you're going to hear it from the fans and the layup lines and all that stuff in the beginning. It's like, it's, you know, it's not gonna make a huge difference, but it's going to make a, it's going to you know, potentially make you a little bit more comfortable next year when I'm, you know, hopefully in a role to get more minutes. So it was kind of, kind of different how I did that, but yeah. So that's kind of how that uh, the first year went. And then every year, um, you know, I kind of really had to pay my dues to to get to that point. You mentioned John yeah. Luer, right? John was one year older than me, and John was, you know, a, a great player, all Big yeah. Ten, all uh, all American, right? Played in the NBA for I think eight years, however long he lasted. And you know, so John was going to get the majority of the minutes uh, ahead of me, and then there was another guy, Keaton Nankoville, um, who was the same class with John. And Keaton was a really good player too. Keaton played overseas for uh, probably six, seven years. Um, and both those guys were ahead of me and, you know, kind of the way, the way we did things was our rotation was generally, you know, seven, maybe eight players deep for the most part, you know? So yeah. it was like, there wasn't a ton of minutes available. So then that, you know, my, my red shirt year or my, my freshman year of eligibility, I was playing a little bit, but I was stuck behind these guys. And then, you know, sophomore year, same thing. I was playing a, a little bit more, um, but it was, you know, same situation. I was stuck behind those guys. I, you know, some games I'd play. 15, 20 minutes, some games I'd play five minutes, some games I wouldn't play at all. And it was, mm -hmm. it was definitely frustrating. Um, I don't think I ever, I ever like really considered transferring, um, which I've, I've talked about this recently with, you know, the, the, the way college sports are now, it's a different yeah. landscape, right? Players have the full freedom to leave and all that. And it's, it's more commonplace. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm honestly thankful that the, the uh, things were the way that they were at the time, right? Because I think mm -hmm. if it was as common as it was to leave as it is now, I maybe would have, you know, got someone in my ear and been like, yeah, maybe I maybe I do need to leave. But, yeah. you know, I stuck it out for three years of not, you know, not having a great, you know, huge significant role. And then finally my, my junior, senior year, my, you know, fourth and fifth year in the program, once those guys 
I graduated, I became, you know, the full-time starter and was able to, to work my way up. So I was, you know, I'm thankful I stuck it out, but it was definitely a, it was definitely a challenge. It was definitely a grind for, for three years there really. Yeah. And, you know, I think um, it's hard either way as a red shirt, you know, cause you, you feel a part of it, but also like you're not going the games. Cause I was, I red shirted as well in Northern. It was like, you know, you, you still feel a part of the team and you still feel a part of everything you're doing, but at the same time, it's like, there's that little divide and it's, you know, it, it takes a, it takes a, you know, tough, tough guy to kind of, you know, fight through that divide and kind of see the big picture at the end. Um, but we also talk about a lot about like the self-assessment of yourself, like knowing, Hey, I got to get stronger. You know, I got to mm -hmm. you know, Im improve this aspect of my game. I got to learn the system a little bit more, you know, taking that year to kind of do that can, can be a blessing as well. And, you know, I'm grateful for, for my experience in that because it kind of, you know, allowed me to grow a lot as a player, especially my freshman year. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, talk about kind of that, that freshman year and um, you know, what happened uh, with the shoulder and, and how did that kind of impact the, the sophomore year and kind of give us a story on, on that. So it's a, <laughs> it's a great story, honestly. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I ended up, I ended up uh, tearing my, my labrum in my shoulder, uh, mm -hmm. my red shirt year. So it was, uh, my shoulder would pop out all the time. It would, it would, what's called a sublex. So it wasn't a full dislocation where it would, it would pop out, but it would go right back in on its own. Yeah. So the first time this happened, uh, my red shirt year, and then I played with it for the remainder of that year. We figured, you know, we could just re kind of rehab it in the off season. It might not need surgery, but then basically once you would pop it out again, it would, everything would just kind of get like stretched out and loose and it would, it would just pop out more and more. So I, I did yeah. that my whole, uh, freshman year of, of eligibility here too right where it's popping out all the time and then finally after my my freshman year I finally got the surgery on it but how it happened so when we when we play and they still do this today when we play at the barn with the raised court this is the thing uh Bo Ryan was doing since I think like his the story is like his first year coach in yeah. Wisconsin they're playing there and someone dove off the floor and it was like this big you know hustle play whatever so he wants everyone to get comfortable with that floor. So what he what he makes the the freshmen do every year, first time we we take a trip there, at the end of practice, we have to he'll roll the ball out of bounds. We have to dive and save the ball and then fall off the floor to get to get comfortable with the with the court here. So I go to do that. <clears throat> I save the ball and I, I felt weird and I, I felt my shoulder, it popped out, but it like I said, it went back in, right? And then uh I'm laying on the ground, and then apparently when I saved the ball, the ball hit my foot and then still went out of bounds. So coach is like, you didn't save it, Jared. You got to do it again. And I look at the trainer, and I'm like, dude, I just popped my shoulder out. And he's like, you got to do it. So I did it. I did it again right after popping my shoulder out, and I have some little, like, little roll, and I'm, like, you know, coddling my shoulder here. And then that was literally – so that was, that's how it all started was – that stupid raised court at the barn. <laughs> yeah. And well, then that's... from there, it was, it was literally, yeah, it was like, uh, you know, about a year and a half of me, of me dealing with that. And wasn't fun, man. It wasn't fun. That's uh that's actually back-to-back -back podcasts of, of injuries at the barn. You know, I had Robbie Hummel last week carrying his ACL at the barn, you rolling off the court. Oh, your I didn't realize, at the... Yeah. I didn't realize I was at the barn that he did that. I was actually just listening just to kind of hear uh, how you do things. I was listening to yeah. a little bit of it, but I only, I only got about uh, 15 minutes in probably. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we're, we're going to, the barn's cursed right now on the pod. Hopefully the, 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 hopefully the next pod doesn't have a, a, a barn incident. So, um, right, you know, right. we're, we gotta, we gotta pick someone to do that. That didn't play at the barn, maybe, but um, yeah, you know, that's kind of an interesting thing because it's a it's a thing that like I think Minnesota's fans are kind of supposed to like hate, quote unquote, like oh, this is the corny Wisconsin like roll off the floor thing, but like I kind of right. love it, like I kind of I'm like why you know it's like this, <laughs> it's like it's like this tradition thing, and it's like it's been passed down. I think you know Bo probably started it, passed it down to uh, Coach Guard, and it's just like a. Yeah you know, a tradition thing that every freshman's got to do it. So I think it's kind of a, I think it's kind I of a told, cool. Yeah. I told guard, I was out there uh, this past fall when Jordan Taylor got inducted into the, the UW mm -hmm. hall of fame, we're sitting at the football game and I'm talking to guard and I told him, yeah, man, you know how I hurt my shoulder. That was it. So I told him he's got to scrap that. <laughs> he's going to just tell you, you got to figure You got to figure out how to fall better, which I mean, yeah, he's right. You got to get yeah. comfortable with it, I guess that's hilarious that's hilarious um yeah so that shoulder ended up you know it's continuing to bother you continuing to be something you had to deal with um you know eventually uh you guys decide to get surgery um kind of take us through that kind of you know process because surgery can be a daunting thing I think regardless of 
of what kind of surgery you're getting. You know, I, one of our teammates, Jamison Battle had to get a, a bone removed in his foot, um, you know, a very minor surgery, but still a, still a surgery. It can be a, you know, a daunting kind of task, uh, kind of take us through that, that process and, and how you decided with your trainers and docs that you're going to get surgery and, and what kind of, you know, kind of emotions you were kind of feeling. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it was uh, it was something that lingered for, you know, uh, a year, year and a half, something like that. And it, it got to the point where my shoulder was just so unstable. It was yeah. the worst one. I remember we were going to uh, – it was like before the season, we were doing like individual workouts, and we were just warming up. And I literally – nothing hard, like like just the weakest dunk ever. I just went up and like basically laid the ball in and like barely grabbed mm-hmm. the rim, and my shoulder just popped out just from doing yeah. that. So I was like, I can't. I couldn't do anything, you know, extending my arm, reaching overhead. There was just no stability there. And then that was right at like the start of the season. So I'm like, I'm not going to have the surgery right now and miss the whole year. So I, you know, I played through it and it was, you know, I wasn't, uh, like I said, I wasn't like really going to be in the rotation. You know, it definitely hindered me because there was a couple times, uh, actually there was once we were playing in, uh, I think it was in Maui. We were playing against Derek Williams. So when he was Mm -hmm. at, uh, when he was at Arizona, Arizona, and I was playing well and I was, you know, uh first half he goes up for like a dunk and i like i stopped you know pinned him on the glass or whatever st- blocked his dunk by popped my shoulder out so i'm like playing and then after that it's like oh you know i'm hurt so i was like make a good play but it's like my body just couldn't hold up through the through the grind of it so you know so anyways we we kind of knew as we got towards the end of the season it was like all right let's get this done as soon as the season's over and mm-hmm. it was literally you know i think two or three days after the season was done we had the team doctor he kind of specializes in shoulders anyway so he uh uh, he did the surgery and it was, it ended up being about, about a six month recovery by the time I was fully cleared to to get back in place. So that was the whole, whole spring, whole summer, you know, into the fall that I was, I was not able to do anything and, you know, work on left hand hook shots and yeah, whatever I could yeah. do. And it was, it was tough. But then, uh, and then once you get, once you get back, it's, you know, the physical challenge is there, but the mental challenge is big too. So I remember one of the early practices, uh, once I was cleared, Cause it was, I basically had like, right when the season started, when we started like real practice, that was like my first like full go. Yeah. Um, and we're in practice and there, there's a loose ball and I dive on the ball and someone dives kind of on my shoulder and I'm like, ah, and I'm yelling, you know? And then like, I stand up and I'm like doing one of the, you know, like kind of rolling my shoulder mm-hmm. around and, and Bo just looks at me and he goes, you're not hurt. I just scared you. And I was like, yeah, you're right. Like he, he yeah, just saw yeah, through it. Yeah. Entirely, you know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. I was expecting it to hurt, and I was scared because it's yeah. Like I said, it was uh, you know, that's the mental piece of it. We're learning to learn to trust it again. So he's like, he's like, hey, you're fine, man. It's in your head. And I was like, yeah, absolutely right. So it's that's that's a big part of the challenge right there is just learning to to trust your body again, and you know, both sides, the physical and mental. Like I said, it's a it, it's a challenge for sure. Yeah, I was gonna actually ask, like, when did you have that kind of you know, that, that mental breakthrough, but I, I am assuming that was maybe one of them, you know, where you I have think that. I, that's the one. Yeah. That's the one that sticks in my head for sure. I, I would say that's, that's probably gotta be the one where it's like, all right, you know, this thing, this thing is, is sturdy again. You know, I can take a hit and I'm going to be all right. And I think mm-hmm. from there it's, you know, it's, I don't know, that, that's probably the, the main one, but I think it's just kind of a daily thing day by day. You just, it yeah. slowly kind of trickles out of your mind that, you know, you can go back to just doing your thing. Yeah, no, I mean, that's right. And I, you know, I've, I've gone through it once and I'll, you know, go through it again here coming up, but it's like, it's that, it's that process where it's like, Hey, you babied your, your shoulder along for six, six ish months. You babied your knee along for seven, eight months. And now it's like, Hey, now it's time to get back on the court. Like now it's time to to do what, you know, you were planning to do for so long. And, you know, there's that, there's that mental hurdle. I remember coach Johnson asking me last summer, um, early in the summer, he's like, have you, have you crossed that mental hurdle yet? And, you know, I told him yes, but I didn't quite think I, I had quite yet. And it wasn't until Trying I was to speak actually, it into existence. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But it wasn't until I actually like did a hard jump stop and like powered up for a dunk that I was like, Oh yeah, you know, I can like, you know, my knees are feeling good. Like I'm, I'm feeling right. what I, what I was supposed to feel. So I think there's mm-hmm. uh that's a, that's a beautiful time. You know, it's the, one of the most fun, fun times. Cause it's like, Hey, we're, we're back, you know, like we're, we're excited to get back into it. Um, yeah, which you absolutely. do, you know, you, you start that next year out, um, kind of take us through your, like your, your mental thought process of like that year, you know, coming off of injury, uh, you just spent the whole last six months rehabbing for this season, you know, you're probably close to a hundred, but you know, you still, you, you know, you're, you're on the, you know, you're on the brink of that, um, kind of take us through like what you're expecting for the year and then how that kind of year, you know, ends up for you. Yeah, so I mean that would have been going into my my sophomore year then. So like I said, mm-hmm. it was still you know 
uh, like kind of the, the situation wise, I still had Johnny Keaton ahead of me. So I still knew, you know, uh, minutes weren't going to be quite what I was hoping that, you know, uh, that I would eventually get to. I knew I was still going to be kind of behind those guys. But I remember uh, having some times where I was I was playing really well. Actually, I remember uh, specifically there was a there was like a Saturday morning practice, um, you know, and we just treated like a scrimmage. So it was like leading up to right at the start of the season. I remember having like a, a, a great practice for whatever reason this mm -hmm. day you know, stands out in my mind. I was, I was hitting shots. I was, you know, making, making strong moves inside, blocking shots, whatever it was. I remember playing great. And then, uh, like I said, once we got into the season, it was, it was John and Keaton that were already playing heavy minutes for the last couple of years. And it was, you know, coach was, was trusting those guys more. And there was actually one, there was one random game that I started, uh, you know, as a sophomore that year. And it was, I think he started all three of us. He slid, he slid John to the, to the three. And we were oh, playing wow. against Illinois, and they had they had this I can't remember the guy's name. They had a really really tall front line that was you know because then we had Keaton's like six eight probably me and John six ten, and mm -hmm. they had like similar similar height where they had a, a tall three man like that. So it was one random game I started, and I'm like, oh here we go, you know, and it's like yeah I'm back to down the stretch. There'd be games where it's like I'd play five minutes in the first half and second half, it's like I don't I don't get off the bench. Yeah, You know, so it was, it was frustrating again, going back to just that, you know, kind of, kind of, uh, you know, paying my dues a little bit and, and waiting my time. So it was a challenge, but at that point I didn't have, it was almost, it was almost harder in some ways. Cause at that point I didn't have the injury excuse, you know, yeah. like my, mm -hmm. my red shirt year, my freshman year, I could kind of be like, well, you know, if I was, if I was healthy, I'd be getting more minutes. And mm -hmm. then now it's like, I'm healthy. And now sometimes, like I said, sometimes the minutes were there, but sometimes they still weren't. And it was just kind of a product of, being behind guys that were, were more experienced and were, you know, coach yeah. didn't have that, that trust factor in me yet. So it was, you know, I had to, had to continue to kind of grind through that and, you know, eventually, eventually earn my way in. And then, like I said, once they, once they both graduated junior, senior year was, you know, able to, to ramp things up a little bit more and, you know, step into a bigger role. Yeah. Yeah. You go into that, you know, 2011, 2012, that, that junior year, you end up starting, uh, all 36 games, uh, you got 60 blocks that year, which uh, is actually third in, in Wisconsin for a single single season. Um, you were, you know, scoring 10 and a half a game, having a having a pretty, pretty solid year. Um, kind of take us through that year because you guys ended up having a, a pretty good year as a team as well. Um, kind of take us through that year, like the, the difference of coming off the bench and getting spot minutes versus playing 36 minutes. I mean, not 36 minutes, 36 games, starting all 36 games, kind of like being the guy in the front line. Uh, how did that kind of process go about for you? And how were you able to kind of just like stay grounded with, with the more, more success still? Yeah. I mean, I think just like I said, being, being around for so long and just seeing mm -hmm. guys do it, you know, uh, ahead of me, I kind of just, you know, it was like, yeah. it just felt right that it was like, yep, this is, this is my time now. And um, I think, you know, uh, like the, my junior year still having uh, Jordan Taylor, right. So it would have been Jordan's yep. Jordan senior, senior year then. And Jordan, uh, you know, was one of my favorite teammates ever. Right. So he was, yeah. he was great at just putting me in situations to be successful and just, he's great at, you know, he's just a great teammate, right. Where he was mm -hmm. uh, just kind of breathing confidence into people. And um, so, you know, having that, that natural, you know, comfortability with him from knowing each other since we were 16 and playing together. And then, like I said, just kind of being, you know, going through the program that that yeah. junior year, I was able to, to step in and do things better. And um, I shot the ball pretty well. I think a lot of that was, you know, like I said, having that good chemistry with Jordan, we get into our, our pick and pop stuff, whatever it was. And, yep. um, and then going to my senior year, you know, it was a little different situation. Jordan graduated and it was obviously a, a huge part of our offense. Mm -hmm. And then we had uh, Josh Gosser, uh was was kind of slated to be the the starting point guard then and then he ended up tearing his acl uh in the preseason so now we went from you know from jordan and then josh was going to take over with good experience yeah. <clears throat> and then he gets hurt so now we had uh trey jackson and then george marshall were the two guys that were both you know talented players but were were completely inexperienced at that time i actually just talked to trey like last week about this okay you know they just weren't quite ready for that and we we struggled especially offensively um, we had some some really big wins. Um, you know, we beat like Michigan a couple of times. They went to the national championship that year. We beat Indiana a couple of times. They were a one seed. Uh, you know, we won at their place when they were ranked two in the country. And, you know, we had we had big wins, but we were our margin for error was small. So offensively, we struggled. Uh, and that kind of snowballed into me, too, where, you know, we weren't probably getting qu good quality looks. And then I shot the ball really poorly. So it was my, mm -hmm. my junior year. 
I think I don't have the, I haven't looked at my stats, but is I think I shot, you know, high thirties, 37%, some, something around there, 36%, whatever mm-hmm. it was from three. And then my senior year, I shot like 25%. So mm-hmm. it was just, I, I went way down and it was, like I said, I think, I think a lot of that was, was losing Jordan and just getting, you know, less high quality looks where he didn't, yeah. you know, didn't have the same gravity pulling, pulling towards Jordan. But, um, you know, and it snowballed mentally where I was, I was struggling. I was, you know, shooting the ball poorly and, yeah. Um. You know, I think that's one thing. If I would have shot the ball like I did my junior year, my senior year, I think I probably would have had a, a you know a pretty good chance to get drafted. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, and it obviously obviously didn't work out that way, and I ended up you know playing in summer league and ended up going overseas. But uh, it was uh overall it was a it was a good good career at Wisconsin. I mean, we had like yeah. I said we had some some good success and we won a lot of big games and um you know a lot of a lot of great memories and connections there for sure. Yeah, no, a, a great career. Uh, that junior year, you guys, you know, have a great year. You go to the uh, Sweet 16 versus Syracuse, you know, a great year. You come back for, for the senior year, um, you know, you get a win at Indiana. You get a win at Michigan against, you know, two really good teams. Um, and then and then the time's kind of up and it's kind of decide uh, decide what's next. Um, mm-hmm. Take us through that that kind of process for, for people that don't know it as well. Obviously, it's like, hey, I want to go to the league. I want to go to the NBA. I'm going to play in summer league and, and see what's out there for me. Um, and then you, you eventually, um, you know, take your career to Belgium initially, uh, kind of take us through that process and how it went for you and, uh, what, what made you excited to go overseas and, uh, what kind of opportunities there kind of was for you? Yeah. So, I mean, I had, uh, you know, good interest from, from, you know, a bunch of agents and stuff and ended up having a couple, couple meetings with, with some guys, uh, you know, once the season ended up and ended up signing with priority sports. So they're a, mm-hmm. a bigger agency based out of Chicago and, yep. Um, you know, so pretty shortly after my, my season ended, I ended up going down there and I was living in Chicago for yep. basically that spring and summer and training down there and, uh, you know, worked out for, I think probably, probably 12, 12 to 14 NBA teams. So it was a really cool process just, yeah. you know, kind of flying all over the country and, and working out for teams and going through these meetings with, you know, the coaches or, or management or whatever. And, um, you know, I had a couple teams that were were interested they said they were you know kind of kind of going to look at me with the you know with the later second round pick and mm-hmm. um ended up going undrafted uh but played so then I ended up playing summer league with uh with the magic so it was at the time it was Orlando was hosting a summer league down there so I was playing oh, cool. you know, in Orlando with Orlando in the in the summer league there um ended up being not the best situation so Orlando was you know, they were struggling then they were, they were young and trying to, trying to rebuild as they have been for a long time now. But, um, <laughs> so they ended up actually having like, like six or seven of their like actual NBA roster guys playing summer league, which is not the norm. Yeah. Like you have mm-hmm. like your rookies that you just drafted and like maybe one or two, like second year guys, but yeah. they had like seven guys from their roster that were, that were still playing summer league. So it was, you know, minutes were, were a little more sparse than I was hoping there. Um, so I played there, then I ended up going out to Vegas and finishing out summer league with Cleveland. Um, you know, not, it was a little bit better there, but I was coming in late and it wasn't, you know, wasn't, wasn't an ideal situation. Probably could have gone to, tra- well, I could have gone to training camp with a couple different teams. Um, but 99%, right. You end up going to the, the D league or, or G league as it is now. Mm-hmm. And it just, you know, the, the structure of it wasn't great. The, you know, for yeah. my style of play, you know, probably yeah. wouldn't have been a, a great option to do that without any kind of you know guarantee or you know like now they have the two-way deals you know if I could have gotten something like that maybe I'd stick around but it was a you know much much better deal to to go over to uh to Europe right so I ended up going to Belgium and crazy thing there is I actually I actually went to Belgium uh when we were like 16 me and Jordan uh, our AU team we went to Belgium which oh wow I've never heard of an AU team doing that yeah I was like what the (laughs) it was super bizarre but I ended up Actually, I'd been in the city that I signed in was called Ostend, and I had we'd been there before. So I found pictures like the, it was a city on the coast, so it's like the North mm-hmm. Sea is right there. I got pictures on the beach, and I'm talking to my teammates as I got there, and I was like, "Yeah, I came here before." And one of them That's was fun. like, "Oh, and you play, and we played you at this this gym, blah blah blah." And it's like, so I had played against one of my teammates there, which was like crazy small world for yeah you know, to get that connection. And but it was it was a really good situation there. We had a we had a very good team. We won the championship both years I was there. Uh, we played in Euro Cup. We actually played in a a Euro League qualifier tournament. So it was the the structure was a little bit different there, where yeah. it was an eight team tournament. And if you won the tournament, you got the last place in Euro League. 
Mm. And that my rookie year, <clears throat> we made it to the championship. Um, we beat a couple, a couple big teams, a big team from from Russia, um, a team from Turkey, and we get to the championship. And it was against the the host team. There was a, a Lithuanian team that was hosting the tournament, and that yeah. was my first like crazy, you know, European environment where it's you know it was awesome. a big arena and they got the big flags and the drums and the mm-hmm. flares going and all of that. And it was like, you know, we ended up losing that, but. You know, so we played in Euro Cup, which was, you know, still really, really high level stuff. Yeah. And, um, you know, was a was a really good spot to uh, to start out my career. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's exciting that uh, that European basketball culture is is interesting for sure. I've obviously I've never experienced it personally, but just seeing videos and, uh, you know, you can kind of testify on, on that kind of end of it. But um, yeah, yeah so you, fun, you know, yeah, no, I mean, it's it looks exciting. They're rowdy. It's the same way. Mm-hmm. I'm I've, I kind of turned into a big soccer fan this year. So I watch a lot of Premier League and I watch a lot of uh, Champions League and that kind of stuff. And it's the same kind of same kind of things. They always have their shirts off and they're waving their shirts yeah. and they're just they're going passionate. crazy yeah, yeah they, no live, doubt. they live for it it's it's crazy especially especially some of the other countries i got to belgium wasn't quite as passionate just generally there but yeah. i went to italy a couple of years after and italy is they're, they're wild there for sure so it's a lot of fun yeah you know and, and you're you know excited to start off your career you know you decide to start off your, your professional career um and, and see where it takes you uh but unfortunately you had a, you know a couple hiccups along the way kind of take us through those uh, meniscuses that you deal with um, meniscus for the people that are listening is a uh, uh, it's in the knee it's a little c-shaped guy in the knee it kind of keeps your knee stable keeps your bones from you know crushing on each other um, and you end up having a couple tears of those kind of take us through that early process in your professional career and kind of how how you dealt with it yeah it was it was tough it was really frustrating so you know uh, you get over there and it's it's obviously you know it's a different style of play and like I said our team was really good where uh, you know, we had a, a really balanced team. So we had, mm-hmm. you know, 12 guys on the roster and, and most games we would play 11 guys, if not all 12. So it was like, wow. no one was putting up, you know, crazy numbers. It was a, a really balanced system and, you know, kind of, it can be hard to, to find your way in that a little bit of, you know, what's mm-hmm. your, what's your role going to be. And, yeah. um, you know, we get a couple months in and I start, I start kind of figuring things out. And I actually had, um, the week before I got hurt, we're playing in, uh, in Euro cup. And I actually won uh, like Euro Cup Player of the Week. So I had, had you know, really, really good game there. Um, and then that weekend playing in the in the Belgian League, I had almost almost like identical stat line, like back to back, like really good mm-hmm. games. I, you know, I'm finding my stride here. I'm playing great. The the next game in Euro Cup again, tear my meniscus. And it was it was mm-hmm. weird too because there wasn't it wasn't like I you know landed and felt something like pop or anything like that. It was just. I played the game after the game. I was like, man, my knee sore. And like the next day in the airport, I'm like, man, my knee is like really hurting. And that was, you know, I kept playing on it for probably at least a month after that. And it oh, started, wow. started swelling up a little bit. And for, for whatever reason, in hindsight, this is very stupid, but for whatever, whatever reason, I never got it checked out. Um, and we had a break coming up for Christmas mm. and we actually got like a week off, which is, which is rare too. So I actually got yeah. to come home for a full week. Oh, so wow. I played, you know, until that week and they're like, oh, you just have some inflammation. You know, you just need some time off. You'll take take a couple of days at home and you'll be good. I was like, all right. So I come home and I remember trying to, you know, trying to get some shots up while I'm here, or, like get on a treadmill and run a little bit. And my knee was just like giving out on me. Like it felt mm-hmm. like it was going to just just collapse. Yeah. So then finally, once I get back out there, then I finally got an MRI, which again, I don't know why, <laughs> why it took this long to do this, but finally got the MRI and then they said, Oh, you have a, you know, torn meniscus, which the meniscus injury in itself, it, it, there's, you know, degrees to it, like, like any yeah. injury, but a For lot sure. of guys will have, uh, you know, a tear and you can potentially just play on it forever. It just kind of depends mm-hmm. on what your symptoms are. And like I said, mm-hmm. mine was giving me that feeling like it was going to give out and it, you know, it was swelling up and, you know, really bothering me. But we had a big, so I, I come home for a week. I go back to Belgium for, for that week and I get it tested. And, you know, they find the, the tear. Well, that weekend we had a big, like, rivalry game. And they're like, mm. well, we really want you to play. We want you to play. So I'm like, all right. And they said, you know, like I said, you can, you can theoretically play on it without making it worse. So yeah. I, play, I play through that weekend on it, limping through. And then, you know, after that, I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm getting this thing cleaned up. So I actually flew back to the States to have the mm-hmm. surgery. And I went to, uh, you know, my agent had a connection with, uh, it was actually the Bulls team doctor. So he did, okay. uh, like Derek Rose, Greg Oden, like a couple, you know, a couple like high profile surgeries mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. And he said it was very routine, you know, look, nothing, nothing, you know, abnormal. So 
so they just kind of scope it out and it can be uh, anywhere from a couple of weeks to a couple of months, you know, kind of depending on how you want to rehab it. Well, yeah. my team was, was actually really nice about it where they said, you know, we're not going to rush you back. They actually signed a player to kind of replace me for like two months. So they're like, well, mm-hmm. you take all two months, get this thing nice and strong, take your time. So I was like, all right. So that was, that was nice how they handled it. Cause I was, I was on a two year contract there. So they knew they mm-hmm. didn't want to you know mess up my knee right away. Yeah. Um, so I take my time with the, with the rehab, everything's feeling great. I come back, I start playing, feels perfect. I feel like myself again, I can jump all everything. Yeah. Couple, couple days, probably after I start playing, it starts like swelling up on me again. And they're mm-hmm. like, Oh, you know, it might be, it might be normal. Just kind of getting back into it. It just keeps getting worse and worse mm-hmm. swelling up on me. I had to get my knee drained a bunch of times. Like I did like a cortisol shot one time. Like Ugh. it was, it was just, it bothered me all season. I kept playing on it. And then uh, after the season ended, you know, we win the championship. Uh, I go home. I go back to the same doctor. We, you know, he looks at it, you know, the MRI, everything. He's like, yep, same tear again. Like it's, you know, it's mm. just, and then he goes, he's like, we can, we can scope it out again. And he's like, it, you know, it might work if it doesn't work this time and it keeps breaking down. He's like, then you start looking at like, you know, like uh, micro fracture surgery and some different things yeah. that, mm-hmm. and he's, as he's telling me this, he's like, he's like, oh, you know, you're a, you're a smart guy though, right? Like you got a, you got an education. You'll be okay if you can't play anymore. And I'm like, dude, I just finished my rookie year. Like I'm sitting here thinking I'm going to play for 10 years, you know? Yeah. Yeah. He's like, if you can't, if you, if we do the surgery and it doesn't work, like you'll, you'll be okay. And I, I remember leaving his office and like calling my wife and I was just in tears, man. Like I'm just, yeah. Yeah. It was, that was a tough pill to swallow. And he's like, you know, we'll, we'll try it. We'll scope it out again. But he, so he mentions as he's saying that he's like, you know, I can't name names. Then as he's talking, he mentions like Derek Rose and Brandon mm-hmm. Roy and Greg mm-hmm. Oden and, you know, guys that just had notori- uh, notoriously uh, terrible knees. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, that's, you know, and he said, for whatever reason, some guys just break down like that and their knees don't tolerate the, the surgery. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm thinking that could be me. So I'm like, you know, I'm just praying, you know, we do the surgery and it's going to work. And, yeah. you know, knock on wood. I go do the surgery a couple of days later and it was, uh, you know, since then things have been, things have been good. I still get a little bit of pain. Like you yeah. said, that meniscus is kind of the pad in between your, you know, your, your, your femur and your, like your shin bones. Right. So, yep. It's, yep. uh, so I get, I have like some bone on bone going there now where, you know, as they take that yep. pad out, you get some of that just, mm-hmm. so I'll feel it. I'll feel it every once in a while if I jump too hard or, you know, kind of cut the wrong way doing something. Yeah. Now it's, I'll feel it, but it, it, you know, it didn't give me too much problems, but it was, uh, Definitely kind of, you know, you, you lose a step a little bit when you start doing yeah. a couple surgeries like that twice and within like mm-hmm. six months. And, um, you know, I think I didn't quite have the same, you know, explosiveness and things that, that I had, you know, through my last couple of years in college. So it was, yeah. a, it was definitely a setback there. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a, that's a kind of a scary process starting out your professional career. You know, you obviously want to have a, a long professional career, play as long as you, you possibly can. Um, and, and to start it out that way is, uh, uh, it's, it's scary. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's makes you nervous. Cause it's like, you know what, you know what you, I think I'm kind of in the same field you know, it's like, you know what you can bring to the game, you know, that you can, you know, play professionally, you know, you're talented enough, but it's like, if this little mm-hmm. thing keeps breaking, this little thing keeps breaking down on me, like, how am I supposed to, you know, how am I supposed to get through it? You know, there's no other option, especially when you hear a doctor talking about like, Hey, you, you have a backup plan, right? I was kind of in the same field, you know, or my doc yeah. told me initially, he's like, you know, he, yeah, uh, you know, you might not be able to come back and play, you know, high, high, you know, major basketball, high division one basketball, professional basketball, like that kind right. of news from like a, like a professional, like a doctor is like super daunting and super like scary. And it, it, it makes you mm-hmm. nervous. You know, you talked about, you know, breaking down with your wife and, you know, just praying for it. You know, it's kind of in the same field where it's like, you know, what is this going to be like? What is this, you know, going to going to lead to? And, um, you know, eventually right. you you end up working through it. You ended up playing uh, for six years after that until 2019 uh having a, a great pro career you're you know you mentioned going to italy you know uh you know being all over the place um kind of just take us you know with like a brief kind of you know update on, on on your pro career and how how it kind of you know ended up going for you and then uh you know when you decided to to hang it up yeah so then uh like i said coming off the knee um you know the next year i went back to the same team and it was you know like we talked about with the shoulder it's you, you mm-hmm. have that process of learning to trust it again and you know, that was, that was obviously challenging. Um, but again, another, you know, another solid year, we won the championship individually, you know, like I said, our team was really balanced, but um, that's kind of more the norm in general over there. Teams don't always expect you to put up, you know, 20 and 10, right. But if you yeah. put up like 
eight and six on a good team, like teams would be like, Oh, he plays his role well, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so I had a chance to, uh, to jump to a better league. Um, actually it was the team that I, I got the, when I got Euro cup player of the week, that was the team we were playing against was a team, oh, wow. a team in Italy. Mm -hmm. Um, and they'd kind of been, they'd kind of been watching me for, for a couple of years and they wanted to sign me and they saw me. So my role in Belgium was, was really just pick and roll. I was diving to the rim. I was getting, you know, dunks. And that was, that mm -hmm. was the majority of my offense. Um, but they kind of saw me from college where I was doing more like pick and pop and stretching the floor. And yep. they thought I could get back into that type of role. So go there and, and started the season with that type of system. And then the coach uh, got fired. Well, actually the uh, a new uh, owner bought the team. And he just oh, wow. blew everything up. So he had uh, he brought in uh, Juwan Johnson. So oh. talking about you know mm -hmm. with with, yep. uh, with your boy Hummel here, right? So yep. Juwan yep. was playing yep. for this guy owned another team in Russia, and then he bought this team and he brought Juwan Johnson over, and then a bunch he brought in a bunch of other like high level like Euroleague or ex NBA guys, and yeah. just blew everything up, and it, it turned into just a nightmare where we had like too many too many imports. So guys were, you know, some games I'd play, some games I'd be, you know, in, in sweats on the sideline and it was just a bad situation. And so yeah. I left there uh, kind of midway through the year. I went to a different team in Italy um, and finished out the season there. But having that, you know, kind of a little bit of turmoil in the middle of the season was, mm -hmm. was you know, you kind of prevents you from kind of hitting your stride a little bit. And so that year was tough. The next year I went to, to Italy again for uh, – with a different team again, but I was, it was, it was a really fun year there. We had a team that was kind of up and coming. Um, they just kind of worked their way up to first division. Um, mm -hmm. So the expectations weren't super high at that point, but we ended up coming like one game short of making the playoffs, which was a good, good success for us just based on, you know, kind of how that, how the club had been growing and yeah. actually playing with, with Marcus Landry, who was uh, oh, wow. played with him at Wisconsin. So he was a senior, my, my freshman year. And so we were playing together over there. It was, it was cool. Um, at that during that year, uh, my wife got pregnant uh, with our first with our with our daughter. Um, so that was, you know, that was a different different ball mm -hmm. game there, too. Right. So then the, the next year she was born in the States. My daughter was born in the States that next summer. Um, and then I ended up going to Japan, um, which was a different, you know, yeah. different world there. So, it was, you know, you, you have an adjustment to get into Europe. Right. And then there's a whole other adjustment to get into into Asia. Yes. Yeah. The culture and the style and everything there. And, uh, I went over there. I had to leave like two weeks after my daughter was born, which was tough. Um, and when I went there, it just was a, it was a bad fit from day one. Like mm -hmm. the style of play was not at all the type of player I was. And it was, you yeah. know, I was struggling with being away from my family and all that. And it was, I was in a bad place mentally. And I, I struggled big time there. Like I was, I yeah. was horrible. I was just telling a kid I was training the other day. I was the worst basketball player in the world. For that, the couple months I was there, I I I had the yips like not like none mm -hmm. of it, man. I couldn't do yeah. anything. It was just you know, I was in a bad bad place mentally, um, and then I ended up getting cut there, which was you know like literally thank God it was you know, <laughs> just getting me out of that situation. Yeah. Um, I ended up you know coming back home for a little bit, and then went back to Japan again, which was oh wow, uh, which was an adjustment again. Uh, but I was out there by myself. My family stayed home and mm -hmm. it was a challenge. And I started losing that, the fire a little bit where when you yeah. have a kid, it's, you know, you're either you're, you know, my wife and daughter are here around their family or they're over there with me and yeah. away from grandparents and cousins and aunts and uncles and all that, you know? So it's, yeah. That's tough. that was a, that was a different challenge, but I knew I didn't want to quit on that note. Um, so I went one more year and, you know, like I said, I had kind of a, you know, a, a bad year overall in Japan. Mm -hmm. Um, so I went to Switzerland for my last year, um, which is a little bit of a step down in terms of the the level there um, from where I had been. But that was kind of the reality of, you know, having having a bad year, like I said. And then uh, it was better. You know, I enjoyed it more there. But it was, you know, by the end of the year, it was it was really the it was the family thing mm -hmm. um, that was that was hard. Uh, where just, you know, I was questioning all year, like, do I want to keep doing this? And then and then my body kind of started telling me, too, is uh, yeah. hip hip issue that there was literally times where I'd be sitting on the couch before practice and I'd stand up and I couldn't legitimately could not walk. Like my hip was just mm. locked up and I eventually, you know, worked through it to go practice and dealt with that through the whole year and just found a way to, you know, do just enough to get warm and get loose. And, yeah. um, but it was, you know, my body was, was kind of telling me along with the the family situation that it was, it was time. So kind of hung it up after that. And, uh, you know, had a chance to go back overseas to, to Belgium where I started different team, but the same league. And it just, just didn't feel right, you know, decided to hang it up and, and come home. And 
kind of got connected here with uh, doing what I'm doing now, working as a as a trainer, and you know, be able to yeah. share my my experience and you know what I learned through my career and try to help out the the next wave of guys and help them you know achieve their their dreams and their goals. Yeah, no, I mean that kind of transitions us into you know our last and final question. We always talk about on the podcast about um, you know adversity, whether it's uh, you know a shoulder injury, whether it's a knee injury, whether it is an injury in, uh, you know in general, whether it's you know some other adversity that you're fighting through your life, and and now you kind of have that that platform where you can obviously give back in terms of. Um, you know, skill on the court and, you know, player development, but also uh, kind of be a voice of, um, you know, not of reason, but kind of a, you know, a voice of, you know, uh, maybe suggestions or advice or, or that, something that, that, that experience that, you, that I can lean yeah, on. And, and exactly. Kind of, I've, exactly. I've been there, right. That, yep, for sure. Yeah. So what kind of, what, what kind of advice do you have for, for a guy maybe that's going through an injury or dealing with, you know, not making a team or, or, you know, some sort of adversity coming up in their life. What kind of advice do you have uh, for them? Yeah, for sure. So that's, uh, you know, something I've run into a lot, you know, as a, as a trainer now. And like I said, that's, I think that's one thing that has really equipped me, um, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to help these kids is the fact that I have gone through these struggles. I, I've gone yeah. through, you know, my situation at Wisconsin where I, I basically sat for three years, yep. right. And, you know, had to, had to sit behind some, some, some better players to be, to be honest. Right. And then yeah. I, I go overseas and I have injuries and I end up in situations that, you know, one that was out of my control with the ownership change in Italy and one that was, you know, on me, but it was, you know, it was, it was a bad fit and, and, I, and yeah. I played bad, but I went through a couple of situations there where it was like, I'm changing teams mid season because of, you know, different cir circumstances. So it's, mm -hmm. I, I've had those, those hardships and I've had those times when I feel like I can't do anything right on the court. Right. And it's, so I, I've been able to talk to kids, you know, fairly regularly where it's like, you know, I had a conversation yeah. the other day with a kid who's like, man, I just, I was playing great early in the year and now I'm slumping and I feel like I can't, you know, I, I can't make any shots and I'm in my head and I'm like, dude, I've mm -hmm. been there. So it's just, you know, in terms of like the, the plane itself, I always talk about trying to find, you know, a, a one little step at a time, one mm -hmm. little victory. Right. So it's like, yep. don't, don't go out there and say, I, I got to go score 20 points tonight. Right. It's like, can I make one shot or maybe not even make a shot? Can I, can I impact the game somehow? Can I get a steal, a deflection? Can I set a good screen? Can yep. I make a good pass? Can I run the floor hard and, and draw help and free up someone else or anything, right? So it's like you just try to find one little thing and then kind of snowball it into into bigger and bigger things from there. And yeah. uh, you know, or the other side of it where it's not even it's not even the game itself. Sometimes it's just your your mindset in general where it's yeah, like for sure. Just keep keep in mind, like, you know, I've been posting stuff on my Instagram about this lately where it's <clears throat> you know, it's your your success and what you do on the floor is not all that makes you you yeah you know i mean yep. there's there's more there's more to you as a person and you know your family's still going to be there for you your friends are still going to be there for you and all that stuff where it's like at the end of the day like playing the game is it, it's cool we all we love it right that's that's what we do but it's it's not who we are so just trying to keep that message in mind of yeah there's a lot more to you there's a lot more value you you provide as a person than just you know playing well or winning games or, or whatever it may be so keep that perspective is definitely key too no, that's, that's great insight. Um, you know, Jared, thank you for taking your time, hopping on the podcast with me, um, you know, another great episode, uh, with a, with a great career, uh, you know, great player, but, a, but a better dude. Um, I'm happy you could hop on with the podcast with me. Uh, for those of you that are listening, make sure you guys check back in next Friday, uh, for episode, what will be episode, uh, 17 next Friday. So, uh, we're chugging along and, and we're keeping it going and, uh, we're going to have a, a pretty special guest on next episode, uh, a WNBA player. So make sure you guys tap in for that one. And, uh, you know, are excited to turn that bell on and, and you get it going, but Jared, thank you for coming on the podcast. We appreciate you. Uh, and we're out. Peace.